Let's all share the good news with the Holy Family Daily Gospel Reflection Podcast with your host, Yvette Celeste. And I'm Haley. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Holy Family Daily Gospel Reflection. My name's Yvette Celeste. And I'm Haley. And this is Haley. And she and I are going to open and share the gospel with you and your family. And why don't we get started with prayer? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to you, O God in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord. We give you thanksgiving and praise, for you have come for us all. You have laid down your life for every one of us, O Lord Jesus Christ. And we praise you, and we always will. Jesus We ask for you, and we ask for the Holy Spirit. Eternal Father, we ask for the Holy Spirit to lift us in our hearts and minds in every area of our lives. Strengthen us in every area of spiritual weakness, O Lord. Lift us all in your mighty presence, in our hearts, in our minds, in our thoughts, in our actions, in our conversations, in every area of our life, O Lord and that of our families, and that of everyone in the world. In the sanctifying grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, and in your mercy that endures forever that we praise, and in your goodness, which is everlasting, that we rejoice in, we give thanks to you in your hearing, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift our hearts to you. We ask for your holy love to pour through our hearts, to pour through our minds, to pour through every area of our lives. And we ask even further, O Lord, to light us ablaze in the fire of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come and renew the face of the earth. Enkindle the fire of our hearts. Fill the hearts of thy faithful. Enkindle our hearts in the fire of your love. And as a very special intention, O Lord, light us all ablaze in the fire of the Holy Spirit. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, we invite you in a very spiritual Holy Communion until such time we can receive you in sacramental communion. And as we invite you in our hearts, O Lord, and in every area of our lives, we give you thanks and praise in your hearing, for you have never left us, you will never leave us, and your love will never be taken. It will never be shaken and is impenetrable with us always. We praise you, O Lord, and we always will. Lord, we ask to guide every heart in metanoia, to guide every heart to you, to receive you fully in the sacrament of the Eucharist and in attending Mass faithfully and regularly and even daily. We ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to speak to every heart, every family member, every person in the world, including Putin, to have a change of heart, to turn fully to the Lord, to glorify your mercy, and to trust in you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Haley, would you like to place anything in special intention into the sacred heart of the Lord? You children and my mom and dad. Very well. Okay. So children all around the world were praying for very well. Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not prevent them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. We are going to be celebrating Easter here in just a few days. And at the time of this recording, of course, we know Easter is when we have baptisms, we have confirmations, we have sacramental celebrations on Easter and around Easter. And we give thanks to the Lord in his hearing for all can renew in their baptismal promises on Easter at Mass. And as we renew our baptismal promises in Mass on Easter, we sing hallelujah with every name in heaven. For all names, praise the Lord. Now, as Jesus calls 
us all to be baptized. As it said in the Gospel of Matthew, baptize all nations in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. This is the Trinitarian formula. It's what's known as a Trinitarian formula. If you haven't been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, just in that order, you are called by the Lord himself to come to him fully and receive the baptism, receive the first installment of the Holy Spirit. This is the fire of the Holy Spirit and also the sanctifying grace for us all from original sin for our flesh. We turn to the Lord in metanoia. We say yes to the Lord when we sign up for baptism. When we bring our children to baptism, we are saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that is what the Lord loves to hear. As we lift our hearts, we lift our family, we lift our children, let's lift all babies that are in the womb and all new mothers and dads in the world and every child that has not been baptized into the sacred heart of the Lord. Lord, we ask for your graces for your Holy Spirit, the infinite merits of the sacred heart of our Lord and the immaculate heart of Mary as we pray over every child and every person, O Lord. We ask for your mercy for those who may not have understood how incredible the sacrament of baptism really is as we receive the first installment of your holy prayer presence, O Lord, and we give thanks to you in your hearing as we lift every child and every newborn and every baby in the womb into the sacred heart of the Lord. You have called them all to you because all belong to you, and we give thanks and praise in its knowing that we all belong to you. We ask to call every parent to call every adult, to call every child, every teenager, every area of the world that has not been baptized to you, O Lord, to sign up, to register for the sacramental baptismal prep classes that are available in every Catholic parish. And we also further ask, O Lord, for your graces, your mercy, the Holy Spirit, and the infinite merits of the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Immaculate Heart of Mary to receive you in body and blood in the Eucharistic celebration that is available in every Catholic Mass to receive the divine mercy of the Lord in reconciliation and to receive the further installment of the Holy Spirit that we receive in the anointing, the seal of the Holy Spirit in confirmation. We ask, O oh Lord, as a very special intention to place all babies into your sacred heart, all babies, all children, and every family member, and every person who has not yet been baptized. We place them in your heart, O oh Lord, and we ask for your holy voice over each family member that has a baby. Lord, we ask for your divine intervention in conversion. We ask for your divine intervention in ending this war in Ukraine and Russia. We ask for your divine intervention for every family who has been directly affected by this unholy war. We ask for your comforter, O oh Lord, for every family that has been displaced from the home that they love, from their family members, and even from their parents. We ask, dear Lord, for your divine intervention here. We ask to place the Holy Spirit here, O oh Lord. Place your Holy Spirit here. And place your Holy Spirit over every area of the world that may not love, may not praise, and may not adore the Lord. For conversion is what Mother Mary prays for the most. Let's use her rosary. Let's use the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Let's use our own sacrifices, our prayers, our fasting, and 
even time spent with the Lord that we can place into the sacred heart of the Lord for conversion for all in the world to receive you fully, O Lord, as you have asked in the Gospel of John, the Bread of Life Discourse, and in the institution of the Eucharist. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And We praise you, and we always will. Lord, we further ask for your Holy Spirit. We ask for the divine intervention for any act of support of abortion, that all moms say, yes, I want to keep my baby, that all moms understand that Jesus is with them, or that you are with them, O Lord, that you have ordained every moment of them and their families, and that God would help them every step of the way. We ask for your divine intervention for every child in the world, for those that are healing from any illness, any emotional, physical, mental, or even trauma, such as those in Ukraine and Russia. We ask for your divine intervention to lead all hands to safety, and we ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to help every child in your fruit, your gifts, your Holy Spirit, not only for children, but for all of us who are listening, for everyone in the world, for all belong to you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, we trust in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beautiful. We ask for the holy intercession of the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. And we ask for the holy intercession of the Holy Family, the saints, and the holy men and women who pray for us all, for every family in the world. And we thank them for their prayers. We ask for the holy intercession from the angels and archangels, led by St. Michael the Archangel, our guardian angels, who are our best witnesses before the Lord's throne, we ask for their holy intercession and their angel embrace for each one of us. And we ask for this for ourselves, our family members, and for all in the world. And we praise the Lord on high, who has sent his angels to be with us, who pray over us. We thank Mother Mary, who is our highest intercessor before the Lord's throne, because her son, happens to be the second person in the Most High Trinity. Her son happens to be Lord. And we thank her for her prayers. We thank St. Joseph for her for his prayers. We ask the Holy Family, the angels, and the archangels, and even the saints for their prayer to lead all hands to the Lord, to lead every heart to the Lord, to lead every area of the world to the Lord. For Jesus, you are exalted above all names, and we praise you, and we always will. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we praise your name. You're perfect and holy, ineffable, unutterable, holy name of God, And we offer the golden arrow prayer. May the most holy, most sacred, most adorable, most incomprehensible and unutterable name of God always be praised, blessed, loved, adored and glorified in heaven, on earth and under the earth and by all creatures of God and the most sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ and the most holy sacrament of the altar. The Golden Arrow Prayer is an important prayer that Jesus gave to Sister Mary of St. Peter. She was a Carmelite nun in France. You can search for Golden Arrow Prayer. And this can be prayed as often as you like. And this is for the reparation of blasphemy, insulting or disrespectful thoughts or behavior against his holy name. We praise you, O Lord, and we always will. Additionally, there's also the litany to the holy face of our Lord. And this is another prayer that was given to Sister Mary of St. Peter, the same Carmelite nun. Both prayers have been accredited to her. And accredited to our Lord who gave them to her. Now the litany to the holy face of our Lord Jesus Christ 
has promises that come with devotion to the litany to the holy face. And Jesus, who told her, if you only knew how much my heavenly father loves when we offer his face to the Lord, that nothing will be refused. Speaking of nothing will be refused. The hour of great mercy is quickly approaching on Good Friday. And Good Friday, of course, we remember our Lord's bitter passion as he spent three hours in bitter agony on the cross for each one of us. He was the final sacrifice for us all. And three o'clock is the hour of great mercy for this is the hour, as we know, that Jesus handed over his life to God the Father. And as we spend time adoring him in his bitter passion, just adoring him and loving him and spending time really meditating on his passion, especially he said during his abandonment, which was revealed to St. Faustina, or nothing would be refused during this great hour of mercy. So there is a divine mercy chaplet that was given to St. Faustina, and it was also given to her to pray a nine-day novena. The prayers were given to her by the Lord himself. And this begins on Good Friday. It ends on Divine Mercy Sunday. And we pray as one voice. There are millions of people that pray the Divine Mercy Novena. You can join in if you've never prayed before, and you will be joining all names on earth and in heaven as Mother Mary prays for us as we pray the chaplet. Mother Mary prays for us all as we lift our intentions to ask the Lord for his mercy during the novena. And we pray in solidarity as one voice before the Lord's throne. It is a beautiful prayer. So that happens on Good Friday. And of course, three o'clock again is the hour of great mercy that opened up for the entire world. Nothing will be refused of us that who ask of the Lord for his mercy. So let's pray for those who do not love the Lord. Let's pray for those who do not love Do not adore, do not praise, and do not trust in the Lord. Those that persecute the Lord, and even the most hardened of hearts, the most lukewarm of hearts, we pray for those who are callous of heart in every way to shift every area of this war, dear Hosanna in the highest, to Turn every heart to glorify your mercy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we thank you in your hearing, O Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So you can search for, if you don't know how to pray, first of all, the rosary. We can offer the rosary as penance on behalf of those who may not understand how incredible it is to praise the Lord. How incredible it is to receive the Lord in the body and blood of the Eucharist. His body and blood of the Eucharist, we can use Mother Mary's rosary over our own intentions and over everyone in the world. Her rosary is a spiritual sword over us all. And Mother Mary has shown me in a vision that her prayers are her cloak over us as we use her rosary. It is a spiritual sword and it's an impenetrable spiritual sword as well. So as we use her rosary, her prayers are before the Lord and how how beautiful her prayers are before the Lord. As we spend time in the Lord's presence during the rosary, we meditate on the gospels. We meditate during the different times of Jesus's life. The joyful mysteries cover the time of Jesus's birth. The luminous mysteries cover the time of Jesus's mighty works that glorify his name and During the time of the Sorrowful Mysteries, we meditate on the Lord's bitter passion. That is something that we could pray on Good Friday. And the Glorious Mysteries are also prayed. And these are the times of His Ascension, the Descension of the Holy Spirit, the Resurrection and the Ascension of our Lord, the Assumption of Our Lady, and the Crowning, the Coronation of Our Lady as well. Jesus, we trust in you. Now, if you aren't sure how to pray the rosary or the divine mercy chaplet or the divine mercy novena you can search for each one there's many resources available Haley and I also have a holy family 
rosary podcasts for anyone who wants to join in. Bring the kids. Mother Mary loves when we all pray her rosary regularly, daily even. And we also have a Holy Family Divine Mercy Family Chaplet that we have available on podcast as well, as well as a Sacred Heart and Healing and Prayer podcast. You can search for all those where you receive your podcasts. And of course, they are all on one page on the podcast page on angelloveblessings.com. Angelloveblessings.com. And we thank you for joining us. Today, Haley is going to read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 14 through 25. One of the 12 who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, for, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus has ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. Jesus said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish, w dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Haley, for reading that for us. You're welcome. Okay, very well. As we begin, we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We turn the word into prayer and praise and thanksgiving to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Glory to you, O Lord, in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord, for you are Lord. Lord, you came for all of us. You came for sinners and you came for all in the world. Lift every area of the world into your sacred heart, O Lord. We ask for your mercy wherever it's needed the most. We ask for your holy, holy spirit, O Lord, to change every heart. We ask for your Holy Spirit to speak to every heart, to return to you, and to attend Mass faithfully and regularly, to receive you in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to glorify your mercy, and especially wherever mercy is needed the most. We praise you in your hearing, O Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth is resounding acclaim in heaven and the rejoicing in the Lord is loud when one sinner turns to the Lord, when one person who is lost turns to the Lord, if someone has separated themselves from the church or from the Lord himself and have gone astray. There is more rejoicing in heaven for one repentant person, for one repentant sinner, than over 99 righteous people, as it is written. In another vision, I was shown how loud this really is, and I only caught a glimpse. And let me tell you, the glimpse was life-changing for me. The glimpse was St. Michael was right in front with countless, countless of the heavenly house, countless people behind him, souls that were in heaven behind him, and every one of them as one voice shouted. It wasn't a tiny yay. It was like, yay. And it was loud. And what the angels have shown me is that just to put it in perspective on how loud this really is, the rejoicing in heaven, when one person says yes to the Lord, as I ask in the Holy Spirit to glorify the name of the Lord, 
And as we all ask in the Holy Spirit, we can all ask the Holy Spirit, please help us all glorify your name, O Lord, as we share the, your living word with everyone we meet. What has been given to me is that if you had a football stadium, and I'm just going to use football stadium because that's the way it was given to me. It was easy to use football stadium. As you can imagine, a football stadium packed every seat and placed next to this football stadium, 11 football stadiums, a thousand football stadiums, a million football stadiums. Name any number and place that many football stadiums next to each other and pack every seat and have the winning play, the same play in every single stadium now that is next to one another at the exact same time, the exact same play in the exactly how many stadiums you can think of at the exact same time. And the football is up in the air. There's only seconds left. It's the last play of the game. The winning touchdown is about to enter into the end zone. And at the last second, the ball makes it. The winning touchdown is played in the last moment of the game. The roar of the crowd all at once with the same play in every football stadium, the same exact play, and the roar of the crowd all at once in every stadium at the same time with every seat packed. Yay! Is nothing, is nothing compared to the rejoicing in heaven when one repentant sinner, when one person says yes to the Lord, yes to the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Or God, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Or Heavenly Father, forgive me. Or Jesus, I trust in you. I choose baptism. The rejoicing in heaven is the same, regardless, when we say yes to the Lord, and especially when one who is lost turns to the Lord and says, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. Where else shall we go? Jesus came for all of us. And there is more rejoicing over one who turns to the Lord and says yes to God, says yes to the Lord. Mother Mary has said yes to the Lord. Saint Joseph has said yes to the Lord. Every saint has said yes to the Lord. And every angel led by Saint Michael, every holy man and woman, in heaven has said yes to the Lord, has received the mercy of the Lord, and has received the greatest salvation, the only salvation that is available and prepared before the heavens were established. Today's gospel is the day that Judas betrayed our Lord. Judas, who was enticed by the enemy, enticed by greed of money, enticed by sin, separated himself even further by acting in a way that wasn't in accordance with the Lord himself, by acting in a way that was unbearable and is unbearable to read, really. He thought of the Lord not he did not think anything of the Lord as he asked the chief priests, what would you be willing to give me if I hand him over to you? And they paid him 30 pieces of silver. Now, Dr. John Bergsma has said 30 pieces of silver is about five weeks worth of wages. That's it, a month's worth of wages in a week. But it wouldn't have been any price that would have been worth turning in the Lord. As we all know, there would have been no price but to put it in perspective, that's how much 30 pieces of silver was worth and how much it was worth to Judas. And the footnotes of the Bible says the motive of greed, really, just incredible greed of money, love of money is introduced by Judas's question about the price for betrayal, which is available in Matthew's gospel. It's absent in the Mark and source. Hand him over the same 
Greek verb is used to express the saving purpose of God by which Jesus is handed over to death and the human malice that hands him over. 30 pieces of silver, the price of betrayal, is only found in Matthew. It is derived from Zechariah chapter 11 verse 12, where it is the wages paid to the rejected shepherd, a cheap price. This amount is also the compensation paid to one whose slave has been gored by an ox. And I'll just read from Zechariah chapter 11 verse 12. Then I said to them, if it seems good to you, give me my wages, but if not, withhold them. And they counted out my wages, 30 pieces of silver. And in verse 13, then the Lord said to me, throw it in the treasury, the handsome price at which they valued me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the treasury in the house of the Lord. And from that moment on, Judas looked for an opportunity to hand him over. And it has been said in other podcasts that this is how sin really affects each person is that the blindness of sin is just horrific. Sin is the saddest thing that we have ever known in the entire history of creation. Sin is what crucified Jesus to the cross, the betrayal of Judas and the the disbelief of the scribes and the Sadducees and the Pharisees who turned him in, who handed him over to, to Pilate, who handed him over to be crucified, those are the ones who did not listen to the word of the Lord. And this is why Mother Mary prays for conversion the most, because those that didn't listen to the Lord are the ones who crucified him. Those that didn't hear and didn't pay attention and didn't listen and take heed to the word of the Lord. Those are the ones that crucified the Lord. That is why she prays for conversion the most. And that is what makes her heart most sorrowful. As Mother Mary spent agonizing hours before the Lord in his bitter agony at the foot of the cross. Jesus, who had just come to prepare for the feast of unleavened bread, as it's written in Matthew's gospel, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare it for you to eat the Passover? So the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the connection between the two festivals is reflected in, and this is written in the footnotes of Mark's gospel, is reflected in Exodus 12, verse 3 through 20, verse 34, verse 18, Leviticus 23, verse 4 through 8. Numbers chapter 9 verses 2 through 14 and again in verse 28 and again in verse 16 through 17. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verses 1 through 8. And it says the Passover, of course, as we know, commemorated the redemption from slavery and the departure of the Israelites from Egypt by night. It began at sundown after the Passover lamb was sacrificed in the temple in the afternoon of the 14th day of the month of Nisan. With the Passover supper on the same evening was associated the eating of unleavened bread, and the latter continued through Nisan 21, a reminder of the affliction of the Israelites and the haste surrounding their departure. And praise and thanks to God for his goodness in the past were combined at this dual festival with the hope of future salvation. Now, Nisan is a month in Hebrew. It's the first month in Hebrew. Its literal meaning means month of flowers. And God took the children of Israel out of captivity, as it is written. And Bishop Barron has a really wonderful reflection as well, as he mentions that at the heart of the Passover meal was eating a lamb, which had been sacrificed in remembrance of the lambs of the original Passover, whose blood has been smeared on the doorpost of the Israelites in Egypt. Making his last supper a Passover meal, Jesus was signaling the fulfillment of John the Baptist's prophecy that he Jesus would be the Lamb of God and the definitive sacrifice. This sacrifice is made sacramentally present at every Mass, not for the sake of God who has no need of it, but for our sake. In the Mass, we participate in the act by which divinity and humanity are reconciled, and we eat the sacrificed body and drink the poured out blood of the Lamb of God. And that is from Bishop Barron. In every Catholic Mass, 
when it was evening, as Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, while they're eating, he announces, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after the other, Surely is not I, Lord. And he said in reply, It is he who has dipped his hand in the dish with me is the one who will betray me. Indeed, the Son of Man indeed goes. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better if that man had never had been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. And in the footnotes it says, where it says it would have been better if he was never born, the enormity of the deed is such that it would be better to not exist than to do it. Jesus, who is Lord, is saying it would be better if he didn't exist than if he turned in the Lord. Indeed, the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. This is, of course, his bitter passion that he knew would come, that God had revealed to him that he knew from the beginning of time would come as Jesus was always one in God the Father. As it was written in the beginning of the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Jesus is the incarnate Word of our Lord, of God himself, the perfect, most holy, most sacred word of God is the Lord himself. Jesus, who came for us all, laid down his life for all of us so that God and man could be reconciled so that he could redeem us from original sin, but also so that man could be reconciled to walk in a state of grace with God himself, to once again be in holy communion with him. And that is what makes the Eucharist so incredible, is the grace of our Lord gives to us his own body. He covenants his own blood, and he gives us this covenant for us to partake in, for us to consume. This is the, like the Passover meal, this is the Lamb Supper. And Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, as it was spoken by St. John the Baptist, behold the Lamb of God, as it was spoken by Abraham, God himself will provide the Lamb. Jesus is the Lamb that was spoken about throughout every area of the Bible. Jesus is the final sacrifice, and no other sacrifices are needed because what the blood of goats and the blood of sheep could not do, what the blood of animals could not do in sacrifices, Jesus has come for us all to do, and he has laid down his life for us all, tabernacled himself in every tabernacle, and we become his tabernacles as we partake in the supper of the Lamb, as we partake in the resurrected body, as we partake in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we partake in the holiest matrimony there is. Jesus gives us his own body to partake in, and we as a result, give him ourselves. We lay our whole lives on the altar of the Lord and we give him our own lives. That is the holiest, most intimate matrimony there is. There is nothing more intimate, no more intimate a way to receive the Lord as to receive him in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And where does he meet us? At his altar at the Lord's Mass. So, this is a very holy invitation to come to Mass. And if you haven't been to Mass in a while, all the more reason to come, especially now. Holy Thursday is quickly approaching. In fact, it's tomorrow at the time of this recording. And Good Friday, the Holy Triduum is approaching. Holy Thursday through Easter Sunday is the Paschal Triduum. And as we approach Easter, as we approach all of the baptisms, as we approach every area of the passion of our Lord, the resurrection of our Lord, the ascension of our Lord, 
We are all called to participate in his holy body and blood that was given to us all and all are welcome. So come to Mass and while you're there, if you've never received the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, register, sign up, make haste to do so, inquire First of all, of the sacramental prep classes that are available for you to register for you and your family. RCIA is available for adults and sacramental prep classes are available for children. You can sign up, register, inquire, and make haste to do so of the next sacramental prep classes that are available for you and for your family. If you have a child or infant at home and they haven't been baptized, if you haven't been baptized, or if you are not sure if you were baptized in the Trinitarian formula, call your local Catholic church. Talk to a deacon. Speak to one of the priests while you're at Mass, in fact, and just ask questions. Sign up, register for the next baptismal prep classes that are available for you and your family, and receive the Lord in the Eucharist. In the RCIA classes, you will receive the sacraments of baptism, reconciliation, Eucharist, which is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the confirmation, which is in another Another further installment in the anointing and the seal that only God can give to us. Truth be told, only the Lord can give us his own body. That is who transubstantiates the very host into his very body and blood. That is the Lord himself in every Catholic Mass. A miracle occurs in every Catholic Mass. Every single solitary mass has a miracle that occurs in it, and you can take part in this miracle daily. Take part in what the Lord has given to us all to partake in. You are invited. Bring the family. Bring your friends. Come one. Come all. And join every voice in heaven as all voices in heaven sing Alleluia. And just as it's written in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, all names in heaven sing glory to God in the highest. And let's do that together with every name in heaven. On the count of three, we can say glory to God in the highest. One, two, three. Glory Glory to to God God in the highest. Woohoo! And peace to his people on earth. Amen. And praise the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May he look kindly upon us and grant us all his peace. Lord, grant us all your rest. In Jesus' name, amen. And may God bless you and your families as we approach the Holy Paschal Triduum. May God bless you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Haley, do you have any Bible verses that you want to share with everyone? My peace be with you. My peace be with you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. My peace be with you is spoken by the Lord as he breathed the Holy Spirit over the apostles. My peace be with you. Jesus, we ask for your holy breath to breathe on us all. We ask for the living water to flow through us all in renewal of our baptismal promises. In every area of the world, O Lord, we ask for your holy living water. We ask to cover every area of the world in your most precious blood. And every area of those who have passed before us. Eternal Father, we offer thee the most precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in union with the masses said throughout the world today, an atonement for every sin, for the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners who have passed away recently, for sinners who have passed away from this unholy war, for sinners everywhere and their family members. For sinners in the universal church, those within our own family and within our own home. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we praise you and we always will. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God in the highest. 
and peace to his people on earth. And may God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, family. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye